Hi, I'm Jim McLean. Almost every golfer wants to hit the ball further. Well, the number one key to power and distance is speed. It's that simple. And with the swing speed, radar, and tempo timer, you'll be able to add distance and consistency to every club in your bag. Easily took five strokes off my game. I've shaved about four to five strokes off my game. I've dropped my scores by four strokes. Order your swing speed, radar, and tempo timer now. And you'll also get this bonus DVD featuring speed and tempo tips with Jim McLean. Get your swing speed, radar, and tempo timer today. This is a cover piece on my roommate from the University of Houston, Bruce Litsky. Bruce and I lived together all through school, roomed at the tournaments together, and then when we turned professional one year uh, playing the mini tours, we lived together. And when I was in school, Bruce used to take divots that were so far to the left, I would oftentimes tell Bruce, you know, this is not going to work. Thank God he didn't listen to me. The Bruce Litsky swing analysis is next. Before I really get into Litsky's swing, I want to talk about the three basic swing shapes. I did a book called The Slot Swing coming out at the end of 2009, and it talks about these three swing shapes. You may have heard of one plane or two planes or multi planes, but basically there are three swing shapes. One would be a shape where the club went out and then dropped behind. That's an inside slot. Another would be a one plane swing where you'd go up and down on the same track. And really I'm looking at the shaft and the path of the club head. And then the third is where the club goes in and over. But it goes over right on plane. And that's what Bruce Litsky did. It's called a sledgehammer swing because it's how it, someone would take a sledgehammer to take it up and then hit a spike on the railroad, let's say, right up and right down. And the guy swinging the sledgehammer never miss that spike, hit it dead center every time. Well, Litsky used this type of swing, as did many other great players like Sam Snead, Bobby Jones, currently J.B. Holmes, Craig Stadler, to play great golf. And that's the analysis I'm going to show you right now. All right, I've got four pictures of Bruce Litsky up here right now, and we'll take them one by one. We'll start in this lower left-hand corner. I'll show you his, kind of his pre-shot routine, and there are a lot of things we can learn from this. One, you'll see Bruce continually move before he swings. And that's going to loop back. There it is. He's re-gripping the club, moving his feet, good target awareness with his eyes, and then the swing. Now, from the front view, when we look at this, this swing right here, we will see that it looks you know, quite normal. You almost can't see anything. It's, it's a beautiful golf swing. Great rhythm, great tempo, great timing to Bruce's swing. Now when I flip to the back view, this is when you're going to see the loop that Litsky had in his golf swing. And I'd like to talk to you for a moment about just how great Bruce Litsky was. He went 11 straight years where he won at least one tournament every year on the PGA Tour. He was always a top money winner. He made millions of dollars playing. But what's interesting is he never practiced. He just didn't work at his game. He had a swing that required no maintenance. There are some swings that require low maintenance, guys that don't hit too many balls. And there are a lot of swings that require a lot of maintenance. The Tour players that hit hundreds and hundreds of balls every day to maintain their swing. Litsky didn't do that. He played golf really part-time. He loved working on his cars. He loved fishing. Uh, and his family was tremendously important to him. Once he had his kids, he reduced his schedule tremendously. So I'm always interested in a swing that works. What do we see in Litsky's swing that is so great and what's unique about it? So I'm going to show you his backswing now. This is a, a swing from La Costa when Bruce was younger. This is about 1988 right here. And I love showing swings when the guys were playing their best. Sometimes you'll have people analyze a swing of a player way late in his career. But you really want to see them when they're playing their best. So here's Litsky down the target line, hitting out to the green right here. And I have a little green line on the backstroke so you can see how far to the inside Bruce takes this golf club. 
and you'll see the toe of the club is down. Now here's the scary thing. If Litsky was playing now, he was a young, say 14, 15 year old student, a lot of teachers would change this swing. They'd say, hey, you can't play with that swing. You're taking it too far to the inside and it's closed. Well, it's very important as we talk about serious teaching, not BS teaching, but what really makes you hit the golf ball well, it's very obvious that it's not the backswing. Now, it's good to have important things in your backswing, but exactly where the golf club goes is not a fundamental. So let's get that absolutely crystal clear. Every player on the PGA Tour takes the club back and their backswing different. You can't find two players that have the same backswing. And, and a lot of teachers are teaching just backswing. They're trying to get you into a perfect backswing position with the idea being that if you make a perfect backswing, you'll make a perfect downswing or have a better chance to make a perfect downswing. So we're going to debunk some of these stupid ideas that really are not true. We're going to get into what's really important in a golf swing. And we're going to look at, right now, one of the greatest ball strikers that ever played. And this is his backswing. Now, Bruce was nine times number one in driving on the PGA Tour. Now, I don't think anyone has ever done that in the history of the PGA Tour since they've kept statistics. Nine times number one. He was also number one in greens and regulation. One year, he finished last on the PGA Tour in in uh, putting, worst on the PGA in putting, and still finished in the top 20 money winners. So you can imagine how good you had to hit the golf ball to do that. So there again, you see Litsky, the club's behind him. Uh, so if we're just looking at the club, it's, it's gone in behind him, a uh, little flat. Uh, and also at the top of the backswing, you're going to see this bowed or flat left wrist. And I'm going to talk to you about what Bruce told me on this subject of a bowed or flat left wrist or a closed club face at the top. Now this is the move that people see, it's the obvious move, it's the loop to the outside. And it looks like an over the top move. So we'll look at that again. We've got his wrist position right there, bowed, and then the loop over the top. And now coming down, his club is coming down in this area and it went back on this arc. So in and over. Now the question is, is that wrong? That's the question. Is that wrong? Well, if you had a chance to talk to the players that played during Litsky's era, he played from the 70s, 80s, and through the 90s. Uh, he's playing the uh, Champions Tour right now. He recently won the United States Senior Open. Um, I would tell you that those players would say he was the best ball striker of his time. The best. Not one of the best, the best. If, if they could have traded their game their long game for Litsky's game, most tour players would have done it. Because how great is it to have a swing where you don't ever have to practice? No balls. He hit balls only a few balls before he played, played his round, and he's out of there. Uh, pretty good deal. One little story about Litsky. He did practice his putting, he said one time. He putted bad at the Byron Nelson, so he went out to the putting green and putted for 30 minutes after the round. The next day he putted worse, so he said that was the last time he ever practiced his putting after a putting after a, a round. All right, here we come down into impact. Now, coming down, you're going to see the club out at this stage. This is step five in the eight-step swing. One of the reasons I think position teaching is so important because we can tell what's happening, why a person is drawing, why a play, person is fading the ball. His club is slightly outside the hands at the halfway down point. That means it's going to be a slight fade swing. So here he comes in to hit the ball. You'll see a little error under the right heel. Great clearing. Uh, I'll take out that red line right there so you can see his arms are in great shape. Right elbow in close. 
Here's his swing. The club swings back to the left and underneath the hands. That's part of what I call the power line. Only the most important thing in golf, how you go through the golf ball. One of the reasons we tape right down the target line so we can see the most important thing in golf. Now here the club comes out uh, on plane. You can see it matches up pretty close to his shoulder plane right there. And then Bruce goes into a nice high balance finish. One other thing you'd see with Bruce at his finish would be from his tailbone up to the top of his head that's a little lean toward the target line. Again, a real fundamental to, ball, to great ball striking. When we talk about fundamentals, I'm looking at what do the great players do. And Litsky does a lot of them. Now we're going to take a look at the face-on view of Bruce hitting a driver. So here we go. Let's pull up Bruce Litsky hitting the driver. Now what I've done here, I put some lines on the screen so you can see really what's happening. And we can start to eliminate some of the ridiculous methodology that you've heard recently in, in teaching. Now we're going to talk to you about the swing of the driver of one of the great drivers ever in golf. Now let's look at Bruce here at address. And, and this is a shot with on perfect angles by Carl Welty at La Costa. Um, he plays the ball quite forward in his swing. You can see the shaft is leaning a little bit back. That's a very common thing, by the way, with great drivers, uh, that the shaft is slightly leaning away. That means the ball is forward, and the hands have still stayed just off the inside of the thigh. Bruce has some angle on his shoulders. I draw a line down from the chin, and it's well behind the golf ball, well behind the golf ball. He's got his left toe turned out. All right, now we're going to point out a couple things here, really interesting things. Great drivers have great, good width, I've noticed, in their backswing. That's Freddie Couples, by the way, right behind him right there. It's at the Tournament of Champions. You only get in the Tournament of Champions one way, winning. Okay, there's the, that's a one-piece takeaway. And also, watch how Bruce's head drifts with the club to the right. Now you're going to see that in a lot of great drivers. Uh, for example, Angel Cabrera won the Masters this year, has probably one of the biggest lateral moves in golf. So here the club goes away in one piece, and you see Bruce's head move to the right, away from the target. He's going to load, and right here, this is at step two in the eight-step swing. This is when the club is the furthest away from the target it will ever be. That's taking that triangle away. You see him get separation off the front line. Great driving swing right here with Bruce Litsky. And you see his width as he goes back and even drifts a little bit outside the line. Again, lots of great drivers do this. Greg Norman would be one, Colin Montgomery would be another. So uh, some of the best drivers in the history of the game. Now, actually, this is really at the top of his swing right here because what you're going to see now, again, a great move, a Ben Hogan move. Uh, Bruce starts hit the lower body moving while the club's still going back. So you see his club was still going back, and he was moving right here. See that? Now, Bruce has always been able to do that. Now, as he starts down, you're going to notice this dramatic narrowing of the shaft. Right elbow under the left. The club is being pulled by the body. Really nothing with the, the hands yet. Look at this club, man. Now, if you look at Litsky from right there, he looks as good as you could possibly look. What you can't see from the front is the loop. But he just loops the club back on the track, back into the slot. It's just a different way of getting there. So here we go. Now, step five, halfway down. This is late step five, where we have a, uh, the delivery position, we call it. Nice bent right wrist. Uh, his head is still slightly back from where it was at address. Again, that's almost a fundamental for great driving. Nobody on the PGA Tour shifts their head in front of where it was with the driver at him, from address to impact. So here we go through to the extension position. That's step seven. This is step six, right at impact, the moment of truth. That ball's just 
gone right there. Great left wrist, strong position by Bruce, the right knee kicking up. I notice if that straight line down from the right elbow to the right knee, beautiful. There's his extension going through. Now it looks like a total release going through uh, as he goes through. But what Bruce doesn't do to hit a power fade is he doesn't roll his left wrist this way. He rolls it a little bit this way. And that's a, if I show you this, this is how Hogan did it. VJ Singh, a lot of players. Bruce never really flipped that toe over. So here we go through and a little more of the reverse cease action as Bruce goes through, full swing all the way through, eyes to the target, a little curve right here to his body, but look how far these hips have gone through. If you look at his belt buckle right there, I put a little dot on it, and we put it to his back swing. Can you imagine this amount of move through to the finish. That's how much your center moves through. This is your center of gravity. I call it your lower center. That's how much that drives forward. There's a push here with the hips. They go forward and up in a great swing. And that allows you to get great extension through the golf ball. So this swing that Bruce Litsky used his whole life required no practice. He hit the ball in the center of the club face virtually every time. He drove the ball super long and drove it in the fairway, and he was a great iron player. So we have to look at the great things that happen in this golf swing, and we've got to rethink this idea of maybe a perfect backswing, perfect downswing, and look at the different ways to swing. And for gosh sakes, we hope that a teacher in modern days wouldn't take a young Bruce Litsky and ruin that golf swing.